enough! Up! And don't leave a mess in my shoulder or I'll smash your giddy-eyed face. Let's sing us a song for the holidays. We've been out to sea and we're back in L.A., so let's pump up the cup full of brew. It's a decade in town, so just wash down some suds. I got hair in my nose, I'm a man. It's a late Friday night and we're stuck in this town with these blonde West Coast surfers and shixers. You suck in the wind, you're away from these punk disco pimple fat puss face with drums. But these fat new wave slobs with the angel dust powder they smoke, shoot at pills in the van. Accelerators and depressants in the 16th century they had snuff. At least in those days it was just effeminate. Yeah, they're all puffed on, coked up these blonde West Coast airheads that funnel some dust up your nose. Then all of a sudden, religious experience, they think they see green rays coming out of Honduras. And these moral majority, self-righteous land slobs with ethical code that you follow. I've sailed seven seas and I've slept in my vomit. I'm free as the flies in my pew. <laughs> ah, but here is Johannes. Get over here. Get over here. Ah, but here is Johannes. He's Here's Johannes, let's peer through this porthole and stuff up my bird in your lens. He's a good honest bird, all he takes is some seed and a few. Eh, change the paper in the bottom of the ship. You can take these producers and censors and agents and ratings and guys with the bucks. I'll tell you the real guys who put on the show, it's the guys in the back, it's the crew. Here's Bob Giammaria, he opens the curtains then goes home and beats on his wife. <laughs> he catches, he catches, he catches his check and gets drunk like a horse. But his pit smell like fish, he's a man. And here's to the grips, and here's to the grips. They make love like gorillas. They're 300 pounds to the man. They pull the sets in and they push the sets out. And they're mostly Italian. Be nice to the grips. And this here is Rocky. He handles the props. He's a bloodthirsty, mean alcoholic. He's a cutthroat, a liar, a gambler, a cheat. But he owns ABC because he's union. We're the scum of the earth and we're proud to be part of the American Broadcasting Company. So let's lift up our cups, count to three, and throw up. And the hell with the censors, start the show. One, two, three. Live from the Los Angeles Basin, it's Friday. Starring Mark Whitefield, Mary Edith Farrell, Melody Chartoff. I'm Jack Burns, and wait, thank you. I, uh, I love you guys. Tell me one thing, do you, do you like the hat? Do you like the hat? I like it too, and here is your first sketch. Flunt. And I'm Joanne Flew. And welcome to AppScam Camera, the program that brings you politicians caught in the act of being themselves. You know, politicians come in all shapes and sizes, but whether they're young or old, rich or poor, Republican or Democrat, or black or white, they've all got one thing in common. If you wave a little green in front of them, you've got a friend for life. <laughs> and with that in mind, we took our AppScam Camera to a rented mansion in Georgetown. Our own AppScam camera funny people are posing as an oil-rich Arab sheik, his wife, bodyguards, and interpreter. <laughs> They're going to be offering various members of Congress large sums of money to help the sheik illegally transfer funds into this country. <laughs> but here's the catch. After the congressmen accept the bribe, they're going to be told, according to a strict custom in the sheik's country, when any money has changed hands, the transaction has to be sealed by kissing the sheik's pet 
goat. <laughs> well, Alan, knowing the kinky habits of some of our nation's top legislators, that might not be such a new experience. <laughs> Let's look in and see. Thank you for coming this afternoon, Congressman Fuller. We know you have a very busy schedule today. Oh, think nothing of it. I just had some in committee hearing on some in toxic waste dump or some in fool thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to present a Sheikh Ali Rab Khan. Yeah. Oh, well, oh. <laughs> oh. What's the camera talking? That's a ass. Damn, that is. Look, look, uh, look. Let, let me get right to the point, Mr. Rab Can. Uh, now, I know just exactly what your problem is, and I'm just the guy that can help. Now, of course, it's going to cost you a lot of money, but because there's, uh, not for me, you understand, no, uh, there's a lot of palms that's got to be greased to get you what you want. Uh, uh, tell him what the mean. Uh, <laughs> well, Alan, it looks like Congressman Fuller can't wait to get his hands on some of those Arab Petro dollars. Was, 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 Geld. Geld is is Gornish. Fragem fifty thousand deskeni. I think Ali Rabkan says that money is no object, and he asked his friend, the congressman, if uh, fifty thousand dollars is sufficient. Fifty thousand dollars will be more than sufficient uh, as a down payment. Tell a shake that. Tell, tell a shake. Ein minute, ein minute. Fragem, if he'll if he'll give him the geld. Er doch schlafen mit meiner Hund. Here it comes, I see, Joanne. I see Galil Rab Khan said, points out that it is a custom in his country to seal any transaction of this nature by having you kiss Mustafa. What? Kiss Mustafa? What? Yes. Oh, well, hell, if it's a custom, sure. I uh, no, no, no. You see, that is not Mustafa. That is Sheikh Ali's daughter and oh. also his third wife. That's not Mustafa. Well then, okay. Here, Biggin. No, 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 no. Please, you don't understand. You see, that is Mustafa. The goat? You want me to kiss the goat? Kissing the colored was bad enough, man. Was, was? Er kannst kissen. Ein du willst nicht kissen, meine Kaze. Uh, uh, the, give me the gelt. Give me the gelt. Uh, the Sheikh Ali Rab Khan says that it is an insult to his ancestors not to kiss Mustafa and that he must ask for the $50,000 back. No, 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 wait a second. Hold on, hold on now. Don't get your bernoose out of joint. <laughs> Little ragheads, I'll just, uh, okay, let me, uh, I, uh. <laughs> the okay. congressman certainly has his priorities in order. Ah. Uh. Mazel tov, mazel tov. <laughs> Now, the next person we're going to see is not a congressman, but he does have a certain amount of influence in Washington. Shikali Rab Khan, may I present to you Mr. Billy Carter? Was, 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 goyum, goyum, was machst du? Uh, Dina Brut, uh, the president is a ganze Macher, nein, oil, uh, petrol, geld, Lydians, no, uh, for stage. Well, the Sheikh Ali Rab Khan welcomes the president's esteemed brother and says that he has heard many good things about you from the Libyans. Well, well, thank the Sheikh very much and tell him I'm, I'm proud to say that some of my best friends are Arabs. Was, was, kish geh ab weg mit der Arabs, don. Don't hack me a chinik. Ne, the gelt, the gelt. Uh, uh, the yeah. Sheikh Ali Rab Khan says no need to explain. Uh, you've already already done this before. Well, that's right. <laughs> gelt, gelt. It's a oh, mitzvah. No, hey, no, no, no. I, I don't, I don't want any money. I've already gotten in enough trouble with that before. Oh well, well, what then? I just want to kiss the goat. Uh, push, go on, push, go on. Push, push. Say, uh, say, Billy. Yes, sir. Say, Billy, you ever watch television? Yes, yes, sir. You ever watch a show called Abscam Camera? <laughs> you mean, you mean, you and, and, and this whole thing? And, and I want, oh, no! Until next week, 
This is Alan Flunt. And I'm Joanne Flew. Saying, don't be surprised if sometime, somewhere, when you least expect it, someone walks up to you and says, Smile. You're on AppScan. Come on. I got better things to do than be stuffing pillows here. I got fumigating I could be doing. I could lots of studying I could be doing. Let's get this thing going. Oh, come on, this will be fun. I've never been in a play before. Ooh. Oh, I got butterflies. Butterflies, I got roaches. Could we get this thing on the road, please? Uh, good friends and neighbors, jolly patrons of the arts. Uh, uh, tonight, I've invited you to my pad to witness my latest new play entitled That Daredevil Named Hamlet. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, imagine, if you will, that this window is a castle. And this lamp is a rocket ship. And this fireplace is a wild Indian. <laughs> now, I guess you recognize the three ladies from our building. Uh, they'll be playing the part of the pregnant wenches. <laughs> so now, without further ado, that daredevil named Hamlet. Oh, uh, break your leg. Do what? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Zimmerman, you got the first line. Terrific. So, <clears throat> all three of us have been made gloriously pregnant by the same fabulous man, Hamlet the Daredevil. Yes, he tilled our soil and we fertilized his seed with the manure of our passion. <laughs> Yes, but why is he hawking us hither all at once? What ho, gentle, bulging ladies! It is I, Hamlet the Daredevil, having just come back from doing daring deeds throughout the land. I just scaled the walls of yonder castle. I went for a ride in a rocket ship. I fought a wild Indian, but of all the deeds that I have done, none compares to the deed I must do now, choosing my lucky bride. Uh, cut, cut. Uh, now, ladies, it's very important that you pay attention to the script. Otherwise, we lose the meaning of the play. Now, Joanne and Thelma, you're supposed to yow like a coyote. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. And Mrs. Eiderman, yeah. you're supposed to fall to the floor and wobble your breasts. Well, that makes two things Mrs. Eiderman won't be doing next. Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Now, that's not a very professional attitude to have. You wouldn't be able to get away with that on Broadway. Well, uh, let's continue. Action! Oh, Hamlet, my magnificent daredevil, choose me. Yeah. And forever will I talk in a deep whisper and rub your stomach. That's good. Oh, oh Hamlet, my magnificent muscular strongman, choose me. And 24 hours a day, I will undo my shirt, at least three buttons, and not wear a bra. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, now. It says I crawl to him. Forget it. <laughs> then I hug his massive thighs. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> and I say, uh, make me yours, you wavy-head Liberace-like Greek god. 
And we will ride naked on horsebacks into the ocean during sunset wearing, what's this? Uh, expensive perfume. <laughs> Forget it. Well, the awe, the fruit you offer is oh so sweet. Pity, I can pluck but one. Oh, 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 how can I divide my precious loins so that none of you goes hungry? Oh, oh, if I cannot find it in my heart to choose, then I choose to find my heart with this. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute, she's not over yet. Uh, uh, Mr. Crenshaw, uh, turn off the lights, please. Ooh, I am the ghost of Hamlet the Daredevil. Ooh, don't be sad. You can have sex with me in your dreams. Ooh. Uh, Mrs. Eiderman, it's your line. Oh. Ooh, ooh. What am I, a bat? I can't see a thing in here. Thank you, Dick. It was lovely. Thank, Thank you, Dick. Thank, Thank you. Pillow, Beth. I gotta oh. go. To Don't bed. use your water after 8 o'clock. All right, we'll break early tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm writing another play. I'd like you to be in it. <laughs> ooh. Next on the Friday edition, Rosalind Carter and Nancy Reagan mud wrestle in Detroit. This is the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. are tonight's top stories. With tensions between Russia and Poland mounting, President Carter today warned that the United States would respond to any Soviet moves against Poland in the strongest possible terms. Carter said that if Russia were to invade Poland, the United States would boycott the 1981 Super Bowl and possibly the PGA Golf Classic as well. <laughs> Well, President-elect Ronald Reagan is keeping the country in suspense as he ponders his choices for a new cabinet. With a Hollywood-style flair for the dramatic, Reagan has gathered his final selectees into a small room and, at a press conference scheduled for Wednesday, he will reveal their identities by yanking bags off their heads one by one. <laughs> in a related story, earlier this week, the limousine carrying Ronald Reagan was struck from behind by a Secret Service car which had been following a bit too closely. Although no one in the limo was actually hurt, the jolt caused President-elect Reagan to begin reciting lines from a Borax commercial he did 20 years ago. <laughs> However, alert Secret Service agents simply smacked Reagan on the side of the head and he returned to the present. Is drug proliferation getting a bit out of hand in Hollywood? Well, that's the subject of tonight's Friday Focus and for that report, we take you now to our correspondent, Mary Edith Burrell. The Sunset Strip in Hollywood, a sleazy haven for the underside of America. At all hours, these streets are filled with pimps, prostitutes, and hustlers. But tonight, Friday Focus takes a look at the Hollywood drug user and the accessibility of drugs on the Strip. To prove our point, we needed to capture an actual purchase on film. We followed several drug dealers using a hidden camera technique developed by our own Friday Focus crack film crew. Unfortunately, there was a lull in drug activity that night, so the crew suggested it was high time I make a marijuana purchase myself. I went to work dressed undercover as a news reporter. With studio money at my disposal, I was prepared to purchase a large amount of Senzamian homegrown, although our sound man recommended Ty Stick. Hey guys, where are you going? Hey, don't run off. Really, they're, they're... hey, guys, come on. I just want to make a little purchase. Not a big one. Nothing major. Please. Still persistent.
Houston in our quest to document flagrant drug sales, we pressed on into the night, well past 8.30 p.m. I'm offering some big bucks for some good weed. Hold on, uh, never touch the stuff. Excuse me, bro. Got any joints? Sorry, uh, we don't smoke. Sell me your Colombian. Sell me your Colombian, sir. Sell me your Colombian. Knowing full well that drug proliferation is undeniable in the streets here, we decided to talk with some innocent tourists to get their reactions to the drug scum on the strip. Sir? Oh, I know what you want, but we only deal in key weights. Huh? It's good weed. We just brought it in from Maui. Jose. People can now observe that the drug problem is growing out of control in our city streets. See, baby, hold on. See what we mean? Sure. All right. Say, babe, freeze it right there. Come against the wall. Cut the camera. Uh, uh, caught on camera at the scene of a drug bust. Cut where I was camera. set up by wine narcs. The this now. is where Edith and Robert were. Going downtown. This is bad. For those of you who are embarrassed by the sound, <sighs> happy Hanukkah. <laughs> I'm Melanie Choda. Good night. <laughs> this has been the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Choda. For all of you, because you care, and this is Pat Benatar!
I know it. Do you have kissing Grammys? Yeah, right over there in that far tank. No, no, no. like a case of fish food. <laughs> Told you a thousand times, I'm not selling you no fish food. Why the hell not? We've got money. We have a right to buy food if we want to. <laughs> not here. You're not going to feed no fish. You're just going to eat the stuff yourself. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not having you eat no fish food in my store. You want to eat fish food? You can down to the aquarium. It's public. You can eat all the fish food you want. Ah, uh, you're just prejudiced because we're fish. <laughs> Don't tell me you're fish. I've been around fish all my life. You're a transphibian. <laughs> There's a big difference. Now, uh, I got a customer here. Would you mind? A human customer. Someone who wants to buy fish. Not climb in the tank with them. What's going on here? Who are those people? People? <laughs> they're TPs. You know, transphibians. <laughs> Nuts! They think they're people, human beings trapped inside the body of a human being. The fish trapped inside the body of a human being. <laughs> they go to Nova Scotia, have an operation. They get their fills, scales, and fins, and, and who knows what else. They're not really fish. They just uh, come here and drive my customers away. Sometimes they, uh, sometimes they steal a fish and do God knows what with it. Hey, what did I tell you? You get out of that tank. You keep those phony fins to yourself, you hear me? You lousy transphibians. <laughs> What are you doing? Nothing. Looking at the fish. Beautiful, aren't they? Uh -huh. Look at them swimming around in there, free from the noise and the distractions of the outside world. A veritable underwater paradise. Oh. We call it Aquatopia. Oh. That's nice. <laughs> wondering how we are in bed. What? You know, a You don't understand? I'm not interested in mating with a fish. I just want a, just want a couple for my apartment, you know, in a tank as a pet. Oh, she likes to watch. A voyeur. No, 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 no. You know, as a hobby, little fish, small fish, you know, the kind that when they die, you can just flush them down the toilet. It's obvious you don't know the first thing about fish. You've hardly ever talked to us, and already you form negative opinions about us. You don't deserve any fish. <laughs> stick my head inside and everything. The only problem is last night, I rolled over my back in bed and I couldn't get up for hours. Oh, what a drag. Really? All right, that's it, I've had it. Come on, everybody, get out of here. Get out of here, wait, to the face. Come on, to the boy, beat it. Get out of the aquarium, it's public. Get all the guppies you want, get away, get away. Uh, excuse me, that was, uh, kissing Grammys, right? You uh, wanted some oh, of those? Uh, uh, right over here. I, th I think I changed my mind. I'm, I'm gonna 
gonna buy a bird instead. Thanks. La musica de los capitanes tenile. And now back to la musica me un momento por una comerciales. Buenos trenos. Señores y señoritas, esto los problemas sobre los clogged pipes. Esta agrovito para los hair, los clumpes de grite y linte. Esta petigo e disgusto para backed up como el clogged arteria. No necesaria freta introducciones, señor Flush. Señor Flush, gauge naco el clumpets. Señor Flush, remove anything that fall in and you don't want it to be there. Señor Flush, consistada los ingredientes especiales e los acidos sulfurica, los plutonium 235, 1235. Por el 3 secondes e uamo. Es finito. Señor Flush, por los resultes. And now back to la musica de los cheap trick. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Fights. I'm Dan Butterworth here with Betsy Grayson in the kitchen of a relatively new duplex. And it looks like we're in for a real good one, Bets. Oh, it certainly does, Dan. You can feel the tension as we wait for Rich Gallagher to come from the bedroom and deal with Susan McNulty, who, as you can see, is getting coffee. Mm, rather gloomily, I might add, Betsy, and... Uh, I don't have to tell you that Rich and Susan have been living together for a little over eight months now, and some say the thrill just might be gone. <laughs> yes, well, Dan, yes, but the real issue here is sex. Well, uh, I think that about says it all, Betsy, and uh, they haven't done a darn thing in bed for what, over two weeks now? Three weeks, Dan, three. That's gotta be tough when you're their age. Yes, it is, Betsy, and of course that brings up the old chicken egg controversy. Does bad sex make for a bad relationship, or does a bad relationship make for bad sex? <laughs> well, we could talk about that till the cows come home, Dan, but oh, here comes Rich, so let's settle back and watch the fireworks. Morning. You want to hit? <laughs> no, thank you very much. It's only 7.30 a.m. I'm having a nice cup of heroin. Brr, I can feel that chill from here, Bets. Look, there's only two eggs left. Do you want one? No, I don't want one egg. Why? What's wrong with just one egg? Because I don't get much out of just one egg. Whoa, I just believe he just rolled his eyes when she wasn't looking. Never a good sign in a relationship, Dan. I think you're right, Betsy. Let's see if they caught it on the isolated camera. Yes, definitely behind the back eye roll. I think we're going to see some action here. You want the sports section? No, just tear out the little Love Is cartoon. I want to bone up. Oh, very, very subtle. Nice jab. You know something? There's a very big difference between love and making love. Mm, that's good, Susan. I think I'm going to write that down. Let's see. That. Oh, biting sarcasm by Rich. A beautiful comeback line. That's good, that's real good. Listen, Richard, the only time you act like you love me is when you want to make love to me. Listen, Susan, the only time you act lovable is when you want me to make love to you. Oh, getting real nasty, real nasty, Dan. You gotta like this. <laughs> well, I don't even feel wanted anymore. Every place we go, you're always looking at other women. You're damn right, because at least maybe there's something I can bump into. <laughs> Ouch, Sharini, that's gotta sting, Betsy. Well, why don't you just bump into some of the men and just get it over with? All right, Susan, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out that door right now and I'm gonna bump into somebody. Ah! Oh, Rich Gallagher has just stormed out of the kitchen, folks. Wow, those dishes went flying, Betsy. Let's see that in slow-mo. Whoa, it's gonna be glue city for a couple of those dishes, Dan. Yeah. 
Let's see if we can get our correspondent, Jim Sherrington, to catch up with Rich. Jim, can you hear me? Well, yes, I can, Dan. Uh, we're up here in the bedroom, and uh, Rich is up here packing willy-nilly in an army duffel bag, I believe it is. Uh, Rich, can you tell me what the heck happened down there? I don't know. We used to have a pretty good relationship. We used to talk about everything. And all we do is talk about the relationship. Everything stinks. Well, uh, I have here a poem you left on the refrigerator after you first made love to Susan. It deals with small birds, winds, and lily pads, I believe. Yeah, and cotton candy. Where did you get this thing, huh? Uh, well, uh, things don't seem very cotton candy-ish for you at the moment. Jim, what, uh, uh, what happened, Rich? How the hell do I know? Just seems like having fun isn't worth the trouble. Everything sucks. <laughs> well, well, Betsy and Dan, I guess the operative words up here are stinking sucks. Back to you. Great report, Jim. Betsy is standing with Susan, who is looking for a dustpan, so let's go now to them. Susan, it wasn't long ago that you and, you and Rich were browsing through knick-knack stores, making love on the afternoon on tables, and talking in nauseating baby voices. What changed? I don't know. We just stopped surprising at each other. I don't know. We stopped wondering and we started predicting. I don't know. <sighs> well, Dan, let's just color this gal blue, by golly. Back to you. Wait a minute, folks. I understand Rich is heading back to the kitchen. Susan. Susan, I just figured out what the problem is. It just hit me. What? It's these idiots. I mean, how can we have a meaningful relationship with a bunch of sportscasters hanging around this place? I bet so I'm definitely picking up on some hostility from Rich and Susan. Well, I thought you wanted the sportscasters here. I thought you wanted the sportscasters here. Oh, Rich. I mean it. We gotta talk more. We gotta be honest. I don't even like sports casters. <laughs> I mean, but I want you to get the camera, take it out of the house right now. All of you, get your equipment and get out right now. Let's go. Bet, I can't believe Come it. They're actually out. kicking us out of the house. You know what? I'll take you apart. I can't believe it. Out. 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 No more sportscasters ever, ever, right? I promise no more sportscasters ever, ever. Wait a minute, let's not promise. Those are kind of dangerous. Uh, let's just hope for no sportscasters, all right? Okay. I hope so. <laughs> Bets, I can't believe my eyes are actually hugging. But I don't know about you folks, but I don't buy it for one minute. No, me neither, Dan. That's one emotionless embrace if I've ever seen one. Right you are, Bets, and five to one, they'll be at each other's throats by next Sunday. Well, there you have it, folks. A good relationship. We're up on Friday night tonight. Let's say we have a word with you, please. Uh, 35 seconds, Okay. Well, that's our show, in case you thought it was somebody else's. I want to thank you, Bat Pat Benatar. You're too little to be singing that big. Please be with us next week when our guest star will be David Steinberg and we'll have a special appearance by the Marshall Tucker Band. Thanks for being with us again. Good night. Good night. Yay! Yay!